My mother made the best pavlovas. I have to be very fair, it was Auntie Peggy's recipe, but my mother did it very well and it was certainly a treat. I mean, we, we had them all the time in the sense that Christmas, birthdays, or anything. That was always her party trick and they were superb. The only other thing I must mention, actually Cameron Cox, who was my pastry cook at Tolano, he made bloody good pavlovas too, but admittedly it was my mother's recipe, I think. He may have varied a little bit. He, he made terrific pavlovas. Anyway, the thing that I was going to say before I was so rudely interrupted by myself was it's the only time I ever heard my mother swear. She was a very straight lady. She didn't swear. The only time was when she said, those bloody Aussies, they keep trying to claim our pavlova. Because New Zealanders always reckon that the pavlova is from New Zealand. And I think it most probably is. My research shows is it was actually created in New Zealand, the pavlova itself. And it was for Anna Pavlova, you know, the, the dancer. So it was named after, or it wasn't named after her, it was created for her, but it was named in Australia. It wasn't called a pavlova in New Zealand. It was named in Australia. That's my theory and I'm sticking to it. Anyway, the point about it is the reason that I make them every now and then at home, and I make these individual ones because they're easy, is because I make a lot of mayonnaise and of course I've always got egg whites. The other thing that my mother said was that egg whites that have been in the freezer are fine. Sometimes they're even better, but they have to be a good egg but they're fine if they've been frozen. So keep that in mind so you can stick them, when you make your mayonnaise, you can stick them in the freezer. And I've got three large eggs there. The other trick which is terribly important, terribly important, is everything has to be spotlessly clean and dry. And the reason being even the smallest drop of water will stuff it up, so keep that in mind. Now, I've got three egg whites there and I'm going to add a pinch of salt and then what I'm going to do is whiz that up. So about five minutes just to fluff it up a bit, all right? What we now, I'm sorry it's noisy, but I can't turn it off. What we now have here is three quarters of a cup of caster sugar and half a tablespoon of corn flour, which I've mixed through. And we add that little by little. So it just takes a bit of time. There's nothing terribly complicated about but you add it little by little and incorporate it before you add, a bit like making risotto, you incorporate it before adding another spoon. Please don't try to hurry it up. And about halfway through adding the sugar, you add three quarters a tablespoon of white vinegar. Just plain white vinegar, not, not white wine, just plain ordinary white vinegar. So that goes in, as I said, about halfway through the sugar. Now, the other trick from mum, which is quite important. You just grab a little bit between your finger and you just feel it like that. And you taste it. Now, the reason being is by doing that, you then know whether the sugar is incorporated really well because it's not grainy. So that's important as well. So that's the other trick from dear old Sybil. All right, so the whole idea about it is if that, if that sugar's not incorporated into it, it won't work and you can always just keep on beating it for a little bit longer. And on a tray, piece of baking paper and I've oiled the tray obviously. The other thing you could always make instead of pavlova is you could make meringues. But I love pavlova, really do. Now I'm making three, I could make some slightly larger ones but I'm making three and there's a reason. because I'm also going to do an eaten mess using pavlova. Now eaten mess is normally made with meringue but it works beautifully with pavlova. And I'll show you that later on when the, when the pav is cooked. Make it into a fairly even shape and flatten it a bit on the top so that you can put your lovely bits and pieces on it. You know, your traditional garnishes, which we'll talk about later. Although I must admit, I have cheated a few times and I've put things like lemon curd on the top and oh, beautiful. But there is a traditional garnish, according to a New Zealander anyway. <laughs> So neaten it up a little bit. I like it a bit rustic, I have to be honest. I don't want it all neat and tidy. And I've seen people pipe them and I've seen people put them in, in sort of burger rounds so that they're eaves, even. Oh, I can't be bothered with all that. Hey, for God's sake, it's supposed to be a bit rustic. But I do like the, the flattening of it a bit. All right, now the oven. 120 degrees, preheated. 
we put it in for about, well, not too high up either, but about 40 minutes. But just keep an eye on, you want it to be, have a, pick up a little bit of colour, but not too much. You know, it's supposed to be white, but it's all right if it's got a, a little tinge of brown. But it has to be set, well, set-ish. So it needs to be crispy, you know the old thing? Crispy, slightly crispy outside, lovely and soft inside. That's what we're after. Anyway, we'll be back in about 40 minutes and we will have a look and see how well I've done. See if my mum would be proud of me. Cream, a little bit of Grand Marnier, or if you don't want to put booze in it, you could always put some vanilla, not too much. And also some icing sugar, guys. You could put caster sugar if you didn't just happen to have icing sugar around the house. And then we'll beat it up. I'll yell above this. You know, my mother always made her pavlovas because she didn't have an electric mixer. She made them by hand. Pretty tough, isn't it? They were tough for all the old girls, they really were. Because it does take, as you saw, a lot of mixing. I mean, we didn't have a fridge at home until I was, oh, 13, I suppose? Maybe 14? We just had a, and I think they call them Kalgoorlie safes here, but we just had a safe on the back porch. Aren't you glad I shared that with you? All right. Just be very careful, we don't want butter, but I want it mixed quite well. There we are, that's looking good. Let's have a look at our pavlova. Beautiful. Cream, 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 cream. Fruit. Now I said to you about the traditional garnish. Well, the traditional garnish in New Zealand anyway, was always kiwi fruit, or Chinese gooseberries as we called them when I was kids. Strawberries and passion fruit. All things that we grew at home. My father grew passion fruit. And actually I'm telling lies. He didn't grow a lot of strawberries because where I came from, a place called Levin, was the strawberry capital of New Zealand. So we had lots of strawberries. But he also grew kiwi fruit. A little bit of icing sugar over the top. And there we have. Pretty darn good pavlo. My mother would be proud of me. She really would. Now the Eaton Mess normally just has strawberries in it. But I put some raspberries in as well. And I'll put some passion fruit in too, because I've got some. A little bit of icing sugar, mash those up a bit. And when I say mash them up, only a little bit. I still want some texture. And then we add pavlova, but don't break it up anymore. And for that, we then add our whipped cream. This is enough for two guys, a glass for it to go in. Now, you did hear me say before that this is traditionally made with some meringue rather than the pavlova. So you could use bought meringues or homemade meringues or whatever you want. Looking good now, what goes with it? Something sweet. So what I have here, a Botrytis Semillon from Cat Amongst the Pigeons. A glass of that lovely sweet wine to go with my pavlova and my eaten mess. And guys, that is good.